सो हेलो एवरीबडी एंड वेलकम बैक टू ब्रांड न्यू वीडियो एंड इन दिस वीडियो आई विल बी कवरिंग प्रॉब्लम सी दैट वॉज कॉर्नर्स फ्रॉम राउंड एट हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टीन आई विल ऑल्सो मेक अ वीडियो ऑन प्रॉब्लम डी ऑफ द सेम राउंड सो स्टे ट्यून फॉर दैट इज वेल राइट सो लेट स्टार्ट विथ प्रॉब्लम सी फॉर नाउ सो इन द प्रॉब्लम वी हैव बिन गिवन अ एन क्रॉस एम मेट्रिक्स राइट we have been given n cross m matrix it has n rows and m columns so something like this it has all zeros or ones right and then you have been given an operation you have been given an operation in one operation you can choose any l shape that is made up of three cells right so you can choose any l shape that is made made up of three cells and it must have Uh, at least one one. So if it it has a one, then you can apply an operation on this and convert all of these cells to zeros. Convert all of these cells to zeros, right? So something like this. So if you have a L shape that contains at least one one, you can apply an operation on that and convert it convert it to all zeros. Right? So uh, that is the operation. And given a matrix of size n cross m uh, uh, consisting of zeros and one, you have to tell the maximum number of operations. You have to tell the maximum number of operations that you can do on the matrix. That you can do on the matrix, or you can say the maximum number of operations it will require to convert the matrix to all zeros, right? Because after it is all zeros, you cannot apply an operation anymore, right? So that is the sense of maximum operations. So given a n cross m matrix consisting of zeros and ones, and given an operation in which you can choose any L shape with at least one ones and convert it to all zeros, you have to tell the maximum number of operations it will take. to convert your matrix into all zeros right so that is the problem so how can we think about this right so as you can see we have to maximize the operations right we have to find the maximum number of operations and in one operation we are converting ones to zeros in operation we are converting ones to zeros so if you want to uh, see or maximize the number of operations it makes sense to always convert 1 1 to 0 always convert 1 1 to 0 right because if you if you will convert more than 1 1 to 0 in an operation it will decrease your number of operations right so you want to maximize your operations so in one operation you only want to convert 1 1 to 0 right so that is the thing so to maximize your operations you want to convert exactly 1 1 to 0 in one operation so how can we see if it's possible to, uh, possible or not so to see that you can break your matrix into or you can see your matrix as chunks of 2x2 blocks you can see your matrix as chunks of 2x2 blocks right this is a 2x2 block and if and if there is any such block such that it has at least two zeros If you are able to find any such two x two block in the matrix such that it has at least two zeros, then you can always apply these operation. Then you can always apply these operation and convert exactly one one to zero in one operation. How so? Right. So let's say you find a two x two block that has that has at least two zeros. So what are the different things that you can have? You can have something like this. Right. You have a vertical zero block, something like this, and the rest two are ones. and you can have two zeros on the horizontal side and two ones as like this or you can have two zeros in the diagonal side so something like this and two ones like this right so now you have find found a 2x2 block that has at least two zeros right now you want to show that if you are able to find such a block then uh, in exactly one operation you you can convert your 1 1 to 0 for all the ones right So as you can see here, we have two zeros and a one. Then you can apply an operation like this, right? And you can convert your one one to zero. You can convert this one to zero. Similarly, in the second operation, you can convert your second one to zero. So something like this, right? So now you have a cell that is made up of all zeros. And you, similarly, you can spread this thing to your entire matrix. You can apply the same thing to entire matrix, right? Similarly, you can uh, you can do the same thing here. Right, make one operation here. Right, sorry, not here. Uh, it will convert it to one to zero. 
make one operation here this will convert here uh, uh, one to a zero similarly apply the second operation like this right so in two operation you made your two ones to zeros similarly apply one operation here and apply the second operation here right so as you can see the number of operations required are equal to the number of ones right so that's your very first observation that is if you are able to find a 2x2 block right that has at least two zeros right then you can convert 1 1 to 0 you can convert 1 1 to 0 in one operation right so if you have if you have x ones in the matrix it will take you x operations right so that is the best approach that you can use so if you have x ones you can convert 1 1 to 0 at one time and for x ones it will take you x operations right so that is the first case when you are able to find a 2x2 block that has at least two zeros but there might be a case that you are not able to find any 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 such block for example now let's think about the second cases when you are not able to find any such blocks for example you find a 2x2 block that has only one zero right that has only one zero so something like this and it has three ones right so if that is the case right now you cannot convert one one to zero in one operation right uh, uh, your one operation will convert at least two ones to a zero for example if you apply if you apply an operation here right it will convert your two ones to a zero right so basically you are wasting one right you are you you are wasting one operation right because in one operation it will convert your two ones to zeros so if you have if you have x ones if you have x ones in your first operation in your first operation you will convert your two ones to zeros you will convert your two ones to zeros so you will be left with x minus one ones right and you have already applied you have you have already applied one operation sorry x minus two ones you will be left with the x minus two ones and you have already applied one operation but now if you see your 3x3 block now if you see you see your 3x3 block now you will have a 3x3 block with at with at least two zeros right now you have three zeros in your 3x3 block so now we are again in our first case now we are again in our case number one where your 2x2 block have at least two zeros so you applied one operation and now you have x minus two ones left and now you are again back to your case one right so in case one if you have x minus two ones it will take you how many operations it will take you x minus two operations again so x minus two operations here and the one operation you use in the starting so in total it will take you how much operations it will take you x minus two plus one that is it will take you x minus one operations it will take you x minus one operations right so that is your the second case now the third case can be when there are all ones in a block right the last case can be when there is like there is no zeros there are all ones in your block right so in this case if you apply an operation if you apply an operation it will convert your three ones into a zero right so if you have x ones if you have x ones right you will apply one operation you will apply one operation and you will be left with how many ones x minus three ones x minus three ones right because in your one operation your three ones will be made to zero so in one after one operation you will be left with x minus three ones and again you will get a 2x2 block with three zeros now again you will get a 2x2 block with three zeros so again you are back to case one again you are back to case one so in case one for x minus three ones it will take you x minus three operations and again you used one operation previously and you use x, you used x minus three operations now so in total it will take you how much x minus three plus one that is x minus two operations sorry x minus three plus one that is x minus two operations yes. so that are the three cases so you can just iterate over all 2x2 blocks and if you are able to find a 2x2 block with at least two zeros then the answer is x operations right otherwise uh, if the minimum number of zeros that you are able to find is one uh, then the answer is x minus one operations otherwise if 
all the blocks have all the ones, then the answer is x minus two operations, right? So that is the logic of the problem. I can write it as case work, right? Iterate over that is our solution. Iterate over all two x two blocks and keep count. Of maximum number of zeros, right? If maximum is greater than equal to two, then the answer is x itself, where x is number of ones. Answer is x operations. If maximum is equal to equal to one, that is you are able to find only uh, cells with one zero, then the answer is x minus one operations. If maximum is equal to zero, then the answer is x minus two operations, right? So that is basically the solution, and if you guys want to see the code for this, the code is nothing new. Right? As you can see the code here, I have my uh, uh, matrix here, and I'm keeping count number of the, the number of ones that ones I have. That is in my sum variable, and then I am iterating over all the two x two blocks, and I'm keeping a count. I'm keeping a count, right? The number of ones that I have. So that's why I'm using a minimum here because I'm counting the number of ones. You can also count the number of zeros or vice versa, however you like, right? So I am counting the number of ones and I am keeping a minimum for the same, right? Because you have to count the maximum number of zeros or the minimum number of ones. That is the same thing. So if the number of zero, if if the if if the number of ones are equal to zero, then the answer is zero itself. Otherwise, if the the number of ones is less than three, the answer is sum. Otherwise, I do min minus equal to two, and the answer is sum minus min, right? So there is a bit of mathematics here, right? Uh, it is similar to the case work I showed you here. So you can do how, however you like. I'm counting the number of ones. That why you can see my cases are a little bit reverse. So that's why, right? So that is the solution to the problem. And if you guys have a doubt, do let me know in the comments, and I will be more than happy to help you guys. And I will see you guys in, see you guys in the next video with the solution of problem D. Yeah. So that is it for this video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Also, if you guys don't know, Continuing Newton School is offering a full stack development course. The course is uh, over six months long, and it is totally based on pay-after placement model. And you don't have to pay anything. There is zero hidden fees. There is zero upfront fees, and they are granting you a minimum package of rupees five lakhs. And the average package is rupees seven lakhs, and the highest package is over rupees twenty six lakhs. So it is a very great opportunity. Also, all their mentors are from top MNCs like Google, Flipkart, Zomato, etc. Also, they will get you placed into the top MNCs as well, like Google, Flipkart, Zomato. Uh, so uh, you can learn from the mentors that are working at those companies, and you can land a job at those companies yourselves. Also, you don't need to worry if you guys think that yeah, I'm not coding, 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 I'm so you can still sign up for this and if you guys are looking for a career in the tech field this is a very uh, this is a very great head start that you should sign up for and if you uh, want to land a job i highly uh, i highly vouch for this and uh, if you guys want to sign up there will be link down below and you can go and sign up from there so yeah you know, be sure to sign up for this and i will see you in the next video bye bye